So, so today uh, the topic for the day is the Delhi Sultanate. So we will be talking about the Delhi Sultanate, how it came into being, what all dynasties were there um, in the Delhi Sultanate and all about it. So uh, when I talk about the Delhi Sultanate, The entire period of the Delhi Sultanate is from 1206 to 1526. Within this time period, there were five dynasties which ruled in the uh, entire frame of the Delhi Sultanate. The first one being the slave dynasty or the Mameluk or you can also call it the Ilbari dynasty. This dynasty basically ruled from 1206 to 1211, sorry 1290, 1211 was the first uh, part of the dynasty, that was the Kutbi dynasty. The second is, the second dynasty under this is the Khiljis. So Khiljis ruled from 1290 to 1320. Then we have the Tughlaq. This was the longest ruling dynasty. The Tughlaqs were the longest ruling dynasty in the Delhi, Delhi Sultanate. They ruled from 1320 to 1413. Then we have the Sayyid. They came in 1413, they were there till 1451 and finally there was the Lodhi dynasty. They were the first Afghan dynasty in the Delhi Sultanate and they ruled from 1451 till 1526 and this is the time when Babur basically defeated the uh, Lodhi ruler and he established the Mughal dynasty. So the entire Delhi Sultanate's rulers, they were, some were Turks, some were Afghans. Okay. So starting off with the first that the slave or the Mamluk or the Ilbari, what do you mean by Mamluk? Mamluk basically is the Arabic word for owned and this was basically used to differentiate the people who uh, were taken in as uh, domestic slaves versus the people who were placed a bit higher and were you know made governors. So this word Mamluk was used for them. Now in this particular slave dynasty or the Mamluk dynasty also, we have three segregations. One is the Qutbi dynasty that is from 1206 till 1211. Then from that, then we have the first Ilbadi dynasty. So first Ilbadi dynasty, this is from 1211 to 1266. Then we have the second Ilbari dynasty and this is from 1266 to 1290. This was founded by Balban, this was founded by Iltutumish and the Qutbi dynasty was founded by Qutubuddin Abak. So first of the rulers, like we just said, is Qutubuddin Abak. He was a ruler from 1206 to 1210 when he died while playing Shogun. So Kutubuddin Ebak was a Turkish general under Muhammad Ghari and he helped Muhammad Ghari consolidate his power in the northern part of India as well as he helped him during the Battle of Terrain. He played a very important role at that time. So after the death of Ghori in 1206, he became 
uh, I mean, Kutubuddin uh, Ebak basically he became the con uh, uh, sole ruler of the entire estate of uh, Ghori in uh, India. But he kind of faced some defiances. One was from Yaldus. Who was Yaldus? Yaldus was the uh, ruler of Ghazni. So he claimed his um, rule over the Indian estates. Second was from Khapcha. He was the governor of Multan and Unsh. And he basically also rose in defiance. Many Rajputs rose in defiance. And they also succeeded in um, getting the Badayu and Farukabad. Uh, he, they, they succeeded in uh, sending away the talks from the Badayu and Farukabad. So in this time, what uh, Kutubadi Nebuk did, through his various military and conciliatory measures, he defeated uh, Yaldus and he severed all his ties with Ghazni. He also took over Muldan and Punjab. He took, took that back and he uh, reconquered Badayu as well as Farukabad also. Now, uh, Kutubuddin Ebak took the title of Sultan. He was also known as Lakbaksh. Lakbaksh, why? Because he was um, he was very uh, liberal in giving all the donations. So he was known as Lakbaksh. He built the first mosque, which is a Kuvutul Islam, Kuvutul Islam, sorry, Kuvutul Islam in Delhi. He is also credited with the building of Adhairin Ka Jhopra. Then um, he is also, uh, I mean, he is also credited with the building of Kutub Minar, as we all know. But he could only build the first floor, and he soon died in 1210. This Kutub Minar is built in the memory of the famous saint Khwaja Kutubuddin Bakhtiar uh, Kaki. So he built, he was building Kutub, Kutub Minar um, in his remembrance, and this Kutub Minar was then finished by Iltutmish. The last thing that we have to talk about is the some people that he patronized in his court. So in his court, there there was uh, two very famous scholars. One was Hassan Nizami, who wrote Taje, sorry Taj ul Masir, and other scholar was Faq Uldin. Who wrote Tariqe Mubarak Shahi? So these were the two famous uh, scholars that he had, or two famous, uh, yeah, two famous scholars that he had in his court. Now, after the death of Kutub uh, Badin Abak, he was succeeded by Aram Shah who was the son of Kutubuddin Abak. He ruled for a brief period of eight months only because he was a very weak, he was a very incompetent ruler. And the Amirs, uh, as well as the, the Turkish Amirs and the Delhi um, nobles, they were not happy with um, Aram Shah. So they invited the governor of Badayu, who was also the slave plus son-in-law of Kutubuddin Abak, known as Iltutmish, to come to Delhi. So Iltutmish came to Delhi, he deposed Aram Shah and he became the next ruler with the title of Shamshuddin. So he became the ruler in 1210 and he ruled till 1236. He belonged to the Ilbari tribe, that is why his um, dynasty or his rule is also known as the first Ilbari dynasty. Right? Then, um, what else do we need to learn about him? Yeah, one thing that we forgot about here about Kutubuddin Abak was that his capital was in Lahore. Or I think I told you that. So, Lahore was the capital of Kutubuddin Abak. 
then Iruthutumish shifted this capital from Rahal to Delhi. So the first ruler to shift the capital from Rahal to Delhi is Iruthutumish. Because uh, Kutumbuddin uh, Ebak, he had his capital in Lahore only. Even though his rule is also considered as a part of the uh, Delhi Sultanate as such. Right? So, um, just a little backstory of Iltutumish. Uh, Iltutumish's half-brothers, they sold um, him as a slave to Kutubuddin Ebak, who then uh, made him uh, his son-in-law as well by marrying his daughter to him. And so the, uh, when I talk about the rule of Iltutumish, so first 10 years of his rule, so somewhere till 1220, uh, he was only concentrating on securing his throne because of a lot of defiance that he was facing. So he was facing defiance from again Yaldus, right? A lot of governors of Muhammad Ghari, like Yaldus, then again Khapcha of Multan. Right then, uh, Ali Mardan, he was from Bengal and Bihar. They were the governors who were uh, giving a lot of defiance to his rule. Then, the chief of Jalor, Rantambur, they joined Gwalior and Kalinjar. Kalinjar is in UP in declaring their independence. So, apart from this, the, he was also threatened. So, this was the internal threats that he had. But there was also an external threat of Chengiz Khan from the northwest frontier of the empire. So, he was uh, the Mongol king Chengiz Khan was expanding his empire, and this was also a growing threat for Iltutumish. So, what he did. What El Dutumish did in this man, man, matter was that he took up the task of consolidating his empire. First of all, he defeated Yaldus, right? In 1215, he defeated Yaldus in the Battle of Terrain. So, this is the same terrain, but these are not the same people and this is not the same time. So, he defeated uh, Yaldus in 1215 in the Battle of Terrain and he drove away Khapcha from Punjab as well. So, these two threads gone. Then in 1220, what happened was that Chengiz Khan, he started invading the Central Asia. Now in Central Asia at that time, we had the Khwarazm Empire. Now if you want to study about more about the Khwarazm Empire, we also have a video on the rise of Islam and the age of conflict, wherein we uh, will go till the um, you know advent of Muhammad Ghuri into India and at that time we study the Khwarazm Empire so just to give you a background basically when the Seljuk em uh, Empire was broken up and the uh, powers went down there were two empires that rose in the Central Asia one was the Khwarazm Empire and one was the Ghurid Empire so because the Khwarazm Empire was spreading in the Central Asia that is what drove the Ghurids to Words towards India. So, uh, this was the Khwarazm Empire, but now it had become weak, and Chengiz Khan basically destroyed the Khwarazm Empire. So, the Khwarazm prince, the son of the Shah of Khwarazms, that was Jalaluddin Magbharni, he sought shelter with Jalaluddin Magbharni, he sought shelter with Iltutumish which Iltutumish very diplomatically refused because if he would have provided shelter, then he, we were under direct threat of Chengiz Khan attack. So he, this way, uh, Iltutumish, he saved um, India from the wrath of Chengiz Khan at that time. Then in 1200, so this was 1220, in 1225, what happened? Uh, Iltutumish engaged in suppressing the disturbances in the east, right? Uh, Iltutumish sent a very large army under his son Nasiruddin Mahmud, which defeated Iwaz Khan and they brought Bengal and Bihar uh, back into Delhi Sultanate. So like uh, over here, we were talking about Ali Mardan, who was from Bengal and Bihar was um, rebelling. So at this time, when, when we were now in 1225, it was Iwaz Khan. So uh, Iltutumish sent his son Nasiruddin Mahmud and uh, he defeated Iwaz Khan, brought back Bengal and Bihar into the Delhi Sultanate again. Similarly, for the Rajputs who were creating problem, what he did, he launched another campaign 
Ranthampur was captured in 1226 and by 1231 Iltutumish had established his authority over Mandor, Jalor, uh, Bayana, Gwalior because of, before this I just told you right that the chief of Jalor he had um, and the chief of Ranthampur they joined with the Gwalior and the Kalanjur chief so now to 1231 he had consolidated his entire power then he also attacked Nagda this is the capital of Mewar, but uh, had to retreat because the Gujarat armies came in and as a revenge he led then expedition against the Gujaratis, the Chalukya rulers and uh, but he was not successful. The Chalukyas they have as uh, you know if you see the past history also they have been comparatively undefeated. Then uh, he divided in his empires into Iktas. So this was the territorial conquest of Iltutumish. He had a very, uh, you know, uh, very happening territorial life as so as to say. Then he divided his uh, entire empire into Iktas. That is assignment of land in lieu of territory. Sorry, land in lieu of salary. So every iktadar, they had to maintain the law and order in their land. They have to collect the revenue. And after deducting their own salary and their own expenses, they had to give the surplus to the central government. And this surplus was known as Fawazil. As a matter of fact, this iktadari was transferable. So he organized, so this was the revenue system under him. Then let's talk about the political system under him. He organized Tariqe Chehelgani. This was a new class of ruling 40. And uh, powerful military leaders, the 40. So these were Turkish Amirs, Turkish nobles. They advised, they helped the Sultan in administering the entire Sultanate. So after Iltutumish died, group this Tariqe Chehelgani, they assumed a lot of powers in their hand. And for a few years, uh, they decided that who will be the Sultan and who will not be the Sultan. And this group was finally eliminated when Balwan came into power and he um, got away with Tariqe Chehelgani. Then, uh, the authority of Il Tutumish was recognized. Il Tutumish was recognized by the Abbasid Caliphate. Now, again, the Caliphate. You will have to go into the next uh, another video that is about the rise of Islam, and then you'll get to know where this Abbasid Caliphate sits in. But just again for a brief background, the Abbasid Caliphate. You can understand they are um, the main rulers or the main uh, center of Islam. Right, the caliphates and they basically had recognized different rulers they recognized them as sultan they recognized their powers so iltutumish was recognized uh, by the abbasid caliphate of baghdad in 1229 and he received the mansoor that mansoor is what it's a letter of recognition by which he was a legal sovereign ruler of india then um, we saw that kutubuddin Abak did not issue any coins but Iltutumish did issue coins he issued the silver tanka and he was the first one to do so this weighed 175 grams which remains the basis of the modern copper jital so he issued silver tanka so just forget this uh, this is i'm just telling you for reference that this is the basis of copper jital but not to get confused iltutumish uh, his currency or his coinage is a silver tanka then iltutumish is also uh, regarded as a father of tomb building and he um, completed the construction of Qutub Minar which is the tallest stone tower in India so Qutub Minar is 238 feet and Iltutumish was the one uh, who finished this tower right then um, if I talk about his patronization the people um, he patronized he patronized Minhas sorry he patronized Minhas Ul Us Siraj 
so he patronized Vinasu Siraj, who was a contemporary historian, and he wrote Tahakate Nasuri. Tahakate Nasuri. So this was a book that he wrote. So since uh, Iltutmish did not consider any of his sons uh, as worthy for succession, he appointed his daughter Razia as the successor. And this was against the normal practice because the nomination um, you know, of women or daughter in lieu of sons was a very noble step. Right? So this was Iltutmish all in all. And the next, uh, basically, we have to study who came after El Tutumish, that will be Razia. But before Razia and, uh, you know, between um, El Tutumish and Razia, there is another ruler that is Ruknuddin Firoz Shah. Now, where did he come from? This is 1236 we are talking about. Iltutmish has died. So he was the eldest son of Iltutmish and the nobles had put him on the throne. Remember the Turkic Elgani, they assumed a lot of power. They put Ruk uh, Ruknuddin Feroz Shah on the tomb. So he took rides on elephants in Delhi. He distributed gold, gold like that. So he used to take rides and used to you know distribute gold. And the government basically was headed by Shah Turkan. He was originally a Turkish maid, so he handled the government. So when the governor of Multan revolted uh, again, so Multan was an area which was, you know, kind of very problematic for all of the Italy Sultanist rulers, at least for the uh, slave dynasty. So when uh, the governor of Multan revolted, Ruknuddin went to uh, suppress the revolt, and on this opportunity, Razia, with the support of the Amirs of Delhi, she sat on the throne or she took the throne and both Firuz Shah as well as Shah Turkan they were put to death. So this is Til Razia and the second part of this we will we'll cover in the next video that will be from Razia then we will go to Behram Shah then Alauddin Masood Shah Nasiruddin Mahmood and then we'll come to Balban, who will be um, again the second Ilbari dynasty. And finally, Kekubat, with whom the slave dynasty will come to an end. And we'll start off with the Khalji dynasty.